Record to cloud. This meeting is being recorded. There you go. Yeah, there's a couple of people that were interested. So now that was weird. I somehow lost me. This is not good. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can. There we go. Record. Oh, there we go. Come on. Start. Start video. Start video. There we go. So we should be started now. Good. So all our discussions about salmon fishing aside, this is uh, as a result of the trip up to Hanina this year and some of the bucktails we're using to catch our, uh, our coho. Um, so I posted uh, some images. So uh, we've got a, uh, we've got a, Mohammed took a bunch of pictures of what the flies that the guide had. And uh, this, these were the effective flies was just trolling a bucktail behind the boat uh, on a sinking line and probably no more than about 15 or 20 pulls up behind the boat. So fairly shallow. And basically we would fish in the sheltered bays or we'd crisscross across the tide lines and we picked up lots of fish that way. Um, so this particular one, these are all bucktails. This particular pattern I'm gonna tie for you is just uses this product called a fish skull, which is a, a heavy weight metal head that you put on your fly. Uh, it helps it sink a little bit. Um, and it finishes the front of the fly off so you don't have to spend hours making a head. Um, this is what they are, called fish skulls. They come in a bunch of different sizes. This is the big, this is the big one. These are the big ones and they're, they use a hook up to a size four aught. Um, but they come smaller. So the one I'm gonna tie for you today uses this one, which uses up to a size one aught hook. And then there's some smaller ones that will go up to a size four. And I think, you know, in, in these two sizes, for a lot of the coho around here, because the herring are a little smaller around here, that's probably the better size. I'll show you. It took me a while to figure out how to get these things to tie so they work too hard to tie. So that's that's the big one. And I'm going to show you a couple others. Um, there's, it took me a while to fit, sort out how, what worked well. This is a little sparser. Um, and it's the smaller head. And here's the more traditional colors which is uh, again, dark on the top with some sort of uh, center line, uh, white on the bottom with a little bit of flash. Um, and that one's got a, a, a green head and that's using, these are all using the fibers are mostly bucktails with uh, some flash in the middle, different color. And then this one, because I've always tied uh, bucktails before and clouser minnows for that fishery that I go to. Uh, I use polar bear because I, I love the sheen that polar bear gives to a fly. And so this one was tied with polar bear. Um, and in some ways, polar bear is a little easier to tie with because it uh, crushes down when you wrap it down with the thread, which means that the polar bear stays attached to the hook. I found with, uh, with bucktail that it doesn't crush as well. So you have to pay a lot of attention to wrapping it down extra hard so that it uh, doesn't pull out on you. But I'll tie with, I'll tie with bucktail this morning. I'll get these out of the way. Now, we tied these, uh, most of the ones the guides use, the four inch ones, they use a, uh, a trailing hook. Um, they're being lodge guys, they want to make sure you don't lose fish, right? So <laughs> now the problem with that is that uh, bucktails or, or tra trailing hooks sometimes will foul hook a fish. And if you're going to continue fishing when you have finished uh, catching your four 
coho for the day, you don't want to catch another bleeder because then you're going to be over limit. So usually you just, when you've caught the third one for the day, you cut the trailing hook off so you don't foul hook a fish. Um, but I'm going, to I'm going to tie one with a trailing hook. Now the hooks I'm using, these are the bigger hooks. This is a size two for this medium sized head. And this is a, a mustad. It, it's a fairly long shank with a little bit of a curve to it. And the trailing hook is these gamakatsu octopus hooks that have an up eye. And the reason I like these up eyes for the trailers is that when you snell them, you are running a uh, straight line through the eye and then doing a snell on the, on the hook. You can tie them in inverted so that the trailing hook has the point up and it will stay that way. So I'll tie the, the trailer on so that you can see how that works. I'm using uh, three out black thread and I'll start the thread about halfway down the shank. And I will run that down. Now, what the reason I'm doing this is I want something to adhere the mono to when I put it on the hook. I want it to be grabbing on something, not just the ship slippery hook shank. So I'm gonna take that. Then for these, these flies, I have my friendly super glue. Now, I haven't seen this around here. I picked this up when I was down in Washington State in the spring, uh, and it's crazy glue. It's brushable, and it comes in a little thingy with a, with a base. It sits really nicely. I, don't, I may have to figure out a way of mail ordering this stuff. And I'm just going to put a little dab of super glue on there. And the reason for that is now I'm going to <clears throat> measure about hook length of mono and I'm going to lay it down on the hook with the <clears throat> eye of the trailing hook up. I'm going to wrap that around the shank and make sure that the, ah, already have a problem. Make sure that the mono is sitting on top of the hook shape. Wrap that down into the super glue. Wrap, wrap back to the back again. And that way now the, the point is up. And this is, uh, this is actually a 20 pound mono. Uh, 25 might be a little stiffer and hold it in place better. But I find anything over 20 to 25 pounds, it's hard to smell it on that little hook. And then I want to have a little bit of uh, shine on the uh, back end. So I've got this uh, Lagarton braid. It's a it's a it's a small braided uh, shiny material. And I'm just going to bring the thread up front and tie it in again on top. Wrap the thread back. Right back to the tie-in point of the trailer. Bring my thread forward. And to do this, I'm going to tie off with a half hitch and bring my uh, bobbin rest up front. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my rotary vise to wrap this braid up the shank of the hook with a little overlap so that it provides a shiny body. And I'm going to go a good pass where I got it tied in all the way up at least halfway up the shank. And I'm gonna take my thread and bring it back and tie off that braid.
and there's one of the problems I have with these damn trailers. They end up catching your fingers all the time. And you have to be careful to keep your hand out of the way of the trailing hook. Because it little little puppy is sharp. This uh, braid has a tendency to unravel when you cut it, so I have to make sure it gets into the little slot on the spool or it'll end up unraveling on the floor. Could you yeah. put a little foam eye on the point of that hook to protect yourself? Yeah, you probably could do that. I, I, I have another technique that I discovered that works. <laughs> so from here on, everything's going to be tied towards the front. And for these, uh, these heads, and let's get the correct size from here. I'll tie it with a green head this time. Uh, for these heads, you want to know, you've got to make sure that you stop the, the construction of your body far enough back that this head will fit over the eye. So the end of the tying in the, in the bucktail is going to have to stop at least this far behind the eye of the hook. Otherwise, you won't get the sucker pushed on properly. And you want to be uh, frugal with your thread so that you don't uh, you, you don't build up too bulky a, a, a part of the body. Now, I the, the sequence I do stuff in here is a little different than some. I'm going to put the lateral line, and I'm going to use some pink bucktail for that. And this just gives a that that sort of lateral line that you get on bait fish a little bit different color so it's a little more pronounced and i'm not going to use a whole lot uh, so i'm going to cut this off it's this pink bucktail dyed pink bucktail you can orange yellow whatever colors you like and we'll tie i i tie up a whole raft of different colors now when i get there I'm going to take my comb. I'm going to take all the fuzz out of the bottom with my comb. So I just have bucktails. And that might be a little too heavy. So I'm going to pull some fibers out. Just a small amount to give a tail. I'm going to measure it back to just past where the trailing hook is. And at that point, I'm going to do what I do with uh, clouds and minnows. I'm going to pinch the material and take my scissors and cut it about an eighth of an inch in front of my thumb and forefinger square. Cut it square. And then when I tie this down, I'm going to hold it so that it just where the thread is here, I want it about at that eighth of an inch putting in front and I'll start at the back and do a light pull, keeping it on top and then cinch down and then wind forward over the bucktail and then wind back into the same position, back at the very back. Now what that does is that cinches all the bucktail down on top of everything and you get a little bit of a taper from where you've tied it in down to where it's attached to the hook up here. So just a little bit of a taper that, that helps keep the shape. Now I've started back here and then I put the next layers of stuff on, they're gonna slide forward. The next thing I'm gonna do is turn the hook upside down. Make sure that bucktail's in there really good. And I'm gonna now do the underside. Now, I found that if you try and tie all of the underside in, in one piece, it tends to pull out and it makes it very bulky. So I'm gonna tie the underside in, in two pieces, two segments. Um, again, I'm gonna take down to the skin as far as I can get. Yeah. 
hold it by the tip and take the fuzz out and measure it. So I'm going to measure back here. This time I'm going to try and go as far back past the trailing hook as the length of the bucktail will allow. Pinch it there and do the same thing. Cut it square, a quarter inch in front of my little more than an eighth inch, less, a little less than a quarter, more than an eighth inch. I'm going to set that down. Now, before I set that down this time, I like, I worry about this stuff pulling out. I've had them pull out a lot. So I'm going to take my super glue and I'm just going to put a little dab of super glue there. And I'm going to set this down the same way at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, wrap at the back. And this time I'm not going to do it right smack on the bottom of the hook. I'm going to cant it a little to the side nearest me and run this down. Bring my material back. So now my, I have a, a chunk of white bucktail. Now to avoid whacking myself on that trailing hook, I'm gonna use the point of my sitters to trail them back and groom them back. And then where did my white bucktail go? Dropped it somewhere. There it is. So now I'm gonna go get another set of white bucktails about the same size as the last one. And cut it off as close to the, the skin as I can get. Try and make it about the same size as the last one. Take the fuzz out. Without taking the fuzz out, this stuff will not sit down. Measure it the same length as the other one. Hold it with the left hand. And cut that quarter inch off the front. It's sticking out. Nice and square. There's still a little, little bit of super glue there, so it won't have to put another batch in. I'm gonna hold it again at that angle and wrap down and over and wrap to the front. It's starting to build up a bit of a head here. I don't want to make it too bulky because it's got to fit inside that fish skull. So there's my uh, beginnings of this. I'm going to have to tie at some point one more thing on the bottom, so I don't want to over bulk this up. I'm going to put the throat down here later. Now I want to put in my flash. And here's, I'm just using this crinkle, crinkle flash. And I'm going to take, uh, I'll take several strands of it, package. I've cut a little slit in the package so that I can get at it with the point of my scissors. And I'm going to take, I'll take about six or eight pieces and cut them off. I'll leave them, leave them really long here because I got to be able to keep this out of the way when I'm working on the rest of the fly. And because this stuff is, is not, uh, not very stiff, it tends to fold down and get caught up when you're tying the rest of the fly. So what, I'm gonna, what I do here is I just tie it in at the tip again right on, on top of the fly, which is in, inverted by, by the way, it's right on top of the fly. And I've got it back here, I'm gonna put that in my material clip. And the reason for that is like I say, if I were to let it hang, because it's fairly, it, it, it will hang down like this and then you get it caught up when you're wrapping the rest of your bucktail on. So I got that so that it's sitting right on top of everything. 
And that keeps that out of the way of the point of the trailing hook when you're trying to tie the rest of this stuff on. Now for the topping on the fly or the, the top of the fly, I've got some green. You can use any, any uh, darker color that you want. And again, I'm gonna do this in two, two goes because otherwise it, you get a big bulk of bucktail. Like I say, it tends to pull out from the bottom. So I'm gonna do it twice here. and not use too much in each go in the fence out. And if you're using polar bear, you want to make sure that you uh, you take the fuzz out. So now I got that, and I'm going to need all of it. So I don't need to do much of a trim here because it's not that long, that, that piece of bucktail. Ah. This time a super glue, I just, again, just a little dab. This super glue has gummed up a bit. You could probably use regular glue, but it take, you'd want to take your time in letting it set before you put the next layer of stuff on. Now, I want to make sure I get in front of that now and build up a little bit of a triangular shaped head. So there's one little batch. I'm going to do the same with another another little batch about as long as I can get. Now if you use synthetics you could probably get away with just and even with polar bear you wouldn't have to layer it like this but I, I had issues with it pulling out. Measure that up and cut it short again. And again, get that, hold that at that angle. And I don't need to super glue this one because there's already some super glue there. And I'll tie that down. I have one more thing to do, but I'm gonna build this, this head up a little bit. And at this point, I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna squeeze that head a little bit so that it's flat vertically. So it's flat this way. And that's going to help the fish skull get off the end there. One last little bit. I'm going to turn him upside down. Get my thread right at the back again. And I need some flash. I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, red flash for a throat and I'm going to take it and cut off a bunch a little clump of it and right in the middle of this lump I'm going to wrap it on a couple of wraps Pull the front back, wrap in front. So there's a good bunch of red flash there. And to make sure that it, it's all together, I'm gonna pick it up like that. And I'm gonna wrap around it in behind it a couple of times to make it one single bunch of flash. And then tie it down with a couple of stragglers there. I'll get rid of it in a minute. And hold it up like that. 
and it needs to be fairly short. So I'm going to measure it from where I've tied it in, just a little shy of the point, and trim it off. It gives me a, a nice red throat. Tie it back a bit. Then I'm going to finish off this little bit of head and do a whip finish. Just to be sure, I'm going to do it twice. I cut my thread off. This is where my fish skull is going to go. So I'll do a trial fit. Now this this has a shape to it. It's it's got a a flat top and a bit of a curved bottom. And so I'm going to measure on where I'm going to put it. And it looks good. I want I want it to go back far enough that I leave a little space between the fish skull and the back of the eye. Because how we're going to hold this thing on from slipping off is I'm going to retie in here and wrap some thread around there. Now to make this sit down, I'm going to get my regular glue because what I'm going to do now is I don't want to get my fingers glued to this thing. I'm going to make that head with regular head cement. I'm going to slide the fish skull on and seat it back in position. Now that stuff is going to, the glue is going to set up soon. It'll take a minute or two. And tie into the front again, right in front of the fish skull and right behind the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to build up a little bit of a, a head in front of the fish skull, right behind the eye. And what that does is that keeps the fish skull from sliding forward because there's a gap there that's just the, the diameter of the hook shank that goes through the fish skull. And by doing that, I can put a nice little so there we go he's almost done i need to shorten up these uh this flash because and that, because i held it in the material clip to keep it out of the way and i'm going to shorten it up just about the same length as the tails that's the rest of the bucktail and take my comb here. This is how I protect my fingers. <laughs> I take my comb here and I smooth out all of this stuff on either side of the hook shank without catching my fingers on the trailer. Now, these things come with eyes that fit onto the skull. The instructions say to use a dab of super glue to hold them on. But quite frankly, I don't find that didn't work too crappy too well. So I'm just going to use regular head cement here. Just means you have to let it dry a bit. I'm going to put a, a dab of head cement in the little socket in the fish skull where the eye is going to go. A little bit of a dab. You could use super glue, but I found that it had a tendency for me to let go the first time I touched the eye. So I just use this stuff. Take the eye off the off the backing and park it in there. Flip it over on its side. Take another eye. 
The eyes are, have, are sticky, but they're not sticky enough to hold on by themselves. And then if you, if you get it seated right in that little race recess in the fish skull and let it dry, they'll be fine. And that's him. Oops, that eye came off. Come here, there we go. And I came off the plastic. Yeah, they're not on that plastic very well. Get in there. Ah, sometimes you got to use a needle to manage these little eyes. Yeah, I never have luck gluing eyes on that shiny metal stuff. Yeah, okay. I, I have never tried it with the fish skulls, but with the with the dumbbell eyes. Yeah, and it usually super glue likes to have a slightly absorbent. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, or rough strip. Yeah, absorbent or rough. So the 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 like I say, the super glue doesn't work as well as just using regular Sally Hansen's. What is it? Sally Hansen's Extreme Wear Clear. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if they changed the bottle style again, but yeah, I have some of that stuff. Yeah. So that that's him. That's a typical bucktail, and you can play around with the colors. Uh, Again, usually tying white on the bottom uh, for the white belly of the herring, and then something to give a lateral line, whether it's just flash or whether it's such contrasting color, and then a darking, darker color on the top. And I've got a whole selection of bucktail colors. Sometimes the uh, lateral line is, can be orange or, or yellow. Uh, some of them I, I don't tie a dark, really dark top. I use a like a fluorescent green on top. And those seem to work as well <clears throat> as the others do. So, Dave, in your instructions, you you put size one hooks. These were size ones. Yes, that's what this is. This is the size one is the trailer, and this one is actually a size two, but a one it worked. Even it, a size two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the size one and twos work really well with these mid-sized heads. Uh, you can use up to a size two hot for the, the big heads, but you I think you'd want a longer shank on those uh, to give you a little more body. I'm gonna... it's some of this, this flash material, it's really funny. I, I got one that I picked up at the fishing mall when I was in Edmonton. It's, uh, it's called flash. Is that a net. circle hook, Bill? Yes, that's a yeah, that's a circle that circle hook. This one. Yeah, is. But... it's an octopus. They call it. Because Bill is showing us a fly that's got like uh, one of these things with a point up. Yeah. Yeah. Just there it is. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So I got, I got that um, at Teddy's. Yeah. That hook. And uh, that's a bucktail I used last year successfully. Yeah. I had a little red on my center line. Uh, and, yeah, red red works. Uh, yellow does too. Uh, I, I think in the photograph that I sent you, that was one of a set of four photographs. And maybe I'll circulate that later, the, the, the series of photographs that uh, uh, Mohammed took of the flies that the, uh, the guide had in his little box. And uh, there was a whole raft of different color combinations. And I'll uh, see if I can find that and I will post it again uh, so that you can see what they all look like. Oh, okay. that's hardware, Bill. Yeah, that's the, that's the spinner I use in front oh, of the bucktail. I, I uh -huh. haven't got there yet. Oh, sorry, there. sorry. <laughs> but but that, that's okay. I, I, will, I will talk about that. I won't put it on. Uh, but I will talk about that. So when I tied these la the last set of bucktails that I, that I showed you guys last season, um, I tied the, uh, I, I found a set of, you know, spinners that had one spinner and a, and a couple of beads on it that came on a wire thing. And, and I tied them in front of, as a little piece, they're like a, a spinning lure with just a single flasher and a bead. 
And I tied those on a piece of short mono in front of the fly. And they work fine. And I, I tie the flash maybe four inches up in front of the fly, three or four inches. Um, but what the guys at, at Honey Know were doing is they had a little box. They had a little box, the guide had a little box with this stuff in it, which I found at the fishing hole in Edmonton. And these are, are folded clevis. And there's just a little metal thingy that, that slides on your line that looks like a horseshoe kind of thing. And you put that clevis through one of these things, which you can buy in a package, which is a single blade spinner. So you put the, the clevis through the hole, slide the line through the hole, and there's your spinner that goes on the line. And then to keep that from getting jammed up against the fly, you buy a whole whack of these in a package and you put three or four beads. So you put your, your mono in, tie, the, tie the, uh, the leader on, and then you slide the beads down, put the horseshoe and the thingy on, and then you tie a little loop, a uh, perfection loop. And that's what you put on your leader. So you end up with a set of three or four beads in front of the, of the fly with this spinner. And it just adds that much extra little bit of flash. Now these I got from their Falcon product. I got them from the fishing hole in Edmonton. Uh, and they're cheap. They're reasonably inexpensive. So the, a guy had a little multi, the guide had a little multi-compartment box that had these things, these things, and these things in them. And the and the flies he kept in a separate box. And uh, he just when he put a fly on, he put a fly on the line. He'd run the beads and whatnot up first, and then he'd put the the the, the thingy on and tie his his uh, clinch knot, and then the spinner would would slide down. And he could tie that right on the leader. But I always like to tie mine if you're going to pre-tie them. I tie them with about eight inches of of uh, forty pound mono ahead of of the line with a perfection loop. And then you can tie that perfection loop onto your six foot leader. And most of the, most of the leaders at the, where the leader attaches to the butt that sticks out of your fly line, you'd have a, you know, a piece of 40 pound mono that is attached straight to your end of your fly line with a, a loop on it. And you would, uh, you would tie a chain, bead chain swivel up there. Because these things do have a tendency in the prop wash to, to go like this and, and they'll spin up your line pretty good. So having that bead chain swivel and then six feet of mono and then the rig with your fly is, is what we mostly use. And uh, it works really well. Could so, you use the, the swivel to connect your, your leader to this? To this setup like i would i would tie a swivel ahead of this whole concoction right with, the, uh, with the, a blade yeah yeah and the then just tie my leader into that into the into the other end of the swivel yeah you, and you that would also help you with the with the rolling fish i yeah. used to do this when i fished hardware for pike uh mm -hmm. i actually read somewhere about this trick that people in bc were using for salmon and I adapted it to my uh, pike lures. Mm -hmm. and it really worked very well. I just always put, you know, a swivel on the on the hook itself, actually. Yeah. So I would have whatever I would have to to tie my my spoon to the line, and then the hook itself was was tied to the uh, to the spoon with a with a swivel. Right. So kind of keep well, the swivel close to the to the hook is, I guess, what. What I found worked well. No, where where we were working, the way we were working with them, we you'd have at the end of your fly line, you'd have a butt section of that with of mono that would have a, a perfection loop at the end, and then you take your swivel and you put the swivel there, and then you take five six feet of mono down to where the fly is uh, uh, before okay. your spinner is, and and what that does is is the swivel actually helps the tip of your fly line sink a little bit and if that whole leader and and uh fly go like this 
it doesn't twist up the fly line. That's why, it, and it's a bead chain, like it's, you know, it's a four or five beads in a, in a chain. It, you can buy them at Canadian Tire, they're cheap. Same thing with, uh, yeah, that, 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 it just keeps the, if, if you get, if you get a five or six foot beater and you're going through the prop wash uh, back and forth through the tide line, it will do this <laughs> and it'll twist up your fly line if you're not careful. So uh, putting that bead chain swivel makes a difference. And I, I use a type three or a type four sink for these. And when you're putting it in the prop wash behind the boat, uh, we'd start at eight pulls out right in the prop wash. And then if that didn't work, you'd put another few out. To, but you never had more than about, you know, maybe 30, 40 feet of line outside the back of the boat. So when you're- Let me hit, get this straight. You never attempt to cast these beasts. No, <laughs> you don't. Okay, cast. because that was my question when I saw what you're building there. It's like, uh, I've never fished a trailing hook and that stuff looks scary. I guess this is the, this is the catch and freeze uh, concoction. Well, well, that it's, it's, it's because uh, you, you've not fished a lot for coho. One of the things coho I've never fished with, for coho, let's put yeah. it that way. Okay, well, one of the things that coho do when they're feeding on herring is they don't come in and catch individual herring. They come in and they go whack. They stun them. They hit them sideways and stun them. And then they circle around and grab them, the ones that are, are stunned. And, and sometimes what will happen is they, if you whack, when they whack them, you'll catch them on the trailing hook. And even, even with the injured herring, sometimes they will, you'll get short strikes. They just, they just won't hit far enough the head of the fly. They catch it more on the tail of the fly or the tail of the coho. And that's what the trailing hook is for. If you if you're if you're getting short strikes, the trailing hook is the thing to do. And and so your hookup rate is better with the trailing hook. The problem with the trailing hook is that if it's it's barbless, even if it's barbless, you'll sometimes get a double hook on them, and then they'll bleed, and then you got to kill them, right? So when we have caught the third coho of the day, we'll cut the trailing hook off. And if we get some short strikes, so what? But at least the next fish you get, if you can, re you can release it without having to to keep it because it's bleeding. And are are tube flies an alternative to this short strike problem? Yes. Like a tall, <laughs> long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A tube fly would be the other way to go, but you wouldn't use the you wouldn't use the fish skulls on the tube fly. Yeah, there are different ways They're of different way different, those, yeah. different way of connecting them up. Yeah, yeah, and and tube flies work as well. Uh, but I, we found that these bucktails with a with a solid head, whether it's the fish skull or just uh, lacquered uh, thread, uh, seem to work. Again, they I think the fish key on the eye of the of the of the bait fish. They if it doesn't have an eye, they they don't hit it as well. The yeah, eyed one seems to work better. Mm. Dave, I have to go. Thank you very okay. much. That was really good. All right. And I'll just stop. Just as a it. point, just as a point, uh, I get the spinners from Canadian Tire. They have single and double.